Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will build a recommendation system with Python. Most of us have used AI-based recommendation system every day. Netflix, movies and shows suggestions for you, ads and media suggestions when scrolling through social media feeds, watching up next video on YouTube, and Amazon's buy it with list. These are all examples of recommendation systems. Recommendation system have become really good and in some cases shockingly good. You may have received recommendations and or advertisement that makes you ask, were they recording me? Generally speaking, companies do not make recommendations by recording your conversations, or at least I hope they don't. Instead, they create sophisticated models and then use these predictions from the models to suggest recommendations or show you ads. We are going to develop a movie recommendation system. Recommendation system mostly work the same and follow similar principles. Let's break these down in simple language. Companies make a mathematical model based on the data they collected. Then they use models to find similar products you interacted with or consumed. And finally, they recommend the similar product to you. We will use content-based filtering method during this tutorial. There's also a user-based collaborative filtering, but we will use content or item-based filtering since people's likes and habits can change over time, but content does not change. Therefore, it is the preferred technique. It was introduced by Amazon back in the 90s and it played a great role in Amazon's success. What is content-based filtering? Content-based filtering looks for similar items based on the items that user have already liked or positively interacted with. Content-based looks at the items that user has consumed, then it finds other similar items and then it recommends them. It is a two-step process. First, similarities between items are calculated. Second, based on the calculated similarities, model recommends the similar items that user have already consumed. Let's understand this within an example. Suppose a user John wants to watch a movie. Our job is to recommend him a movie based on his past preferences. We will first search for movies that John has watched or liked. Let's say John has seen the Lord of the Rings series. Next we will search for other movies that are similar to Lord of the Rings. We find that The Hobbit is highly similar to Lord of the Rings. Therefore, it is a good chance that John will also like Hobbit because it is comparable to the ones John has already liked. Hence, we will suggest the movie Hobbit to John. There are few advantages of content-based filtering. Unlike people's taste, movies or the content doesn't change. There are usually a lot fewer items than people. Therefore, it is easier to maintain and compute the matrices. In this implementation, when the user searches for a movie, we will recommend the top 5 similar movies using our movies recommendation system. The dataset used in this tutorial is from TMDB. It is available along with the notebook on GitHub. Link is in the description below. Let's code the recommendation system in Python. I'll be using Jupyter Notebook as IDE. First, we need to import required libraries, which we will be using in our movies recommendation system. So we will import numpy, pandas, porter stemmer for stemming the words to the root, count vectorizer to convert text to numerical data. The words needs to be encoded as integer so we can use them as input in the machine learning algorithm. Finally, we import the cosine similarity from sklearn. We will use cosine similarity to calculate the similarity measure between movies. Let's import the dataset by adding the path of the CSV file to the read CSV function from pandas. Once we execute the cell, we have the data in a data frame. Now that we have the data, let's have a look at the movies dataset. Our dataset contains three variables, movie ID, title, and tags. Tags is the main column that we will use to determine the similarity between the movies. Tag column consists of brief description of the movie, movie genres, actors, and director. We will use this variable to compare movies and determine whether movies are alike. 
we will use the Porter Stemmer class from NLTK library to stem the words. I'll create a PS object from the Porter Stemmer. Let's go ahead and define a helper method. I'll call it stem and it takes text as an argument. We will declare a list and loop through the text and split it so we can operate on each word. And on each word, we will apply the stem function from PS. We will append the stem words to the Y list, join the words with a space and return them. Let's take a look at what the stemmer object does. It reduces the word to the root or the base word. For example, we have a base word program. The program has several variation. For example, programs, programmer, programming. If we pass each of these words through the stemmer, it will return the base word. Let's apply the stemmer helper function on the tags column. We will use the iter rows to iterate over the data frame and use the lock index method for this. I covered this in detail in my pandas video. So if you need more details on this, I'll leave the link in the description. I'll iterate over the data frame. This will give us the index and the row. By using the lock method on the data frame, we will provide the index location along with the column name. Then we set the value of the tags column to the stem version. Let's go ahead and encode the text to integer. For this, we will use the count vectorizer to convert the tags into a vector. This will convert all the words into a matrix of numbers that cosine similarity algorithm can use. We will create an instance of count vectorizer and set two parameters. First, we'll set the max feature to 5000. Max feature is used to build a vocabulary that only considers the top max features ordered by the term frequency across the corpus. Corpus is the dictionary or all the words we have in our tags column. Second, we set the stop words to English. Stop words are the terms that are ignored, so the words like a, the in a sentence are ignored. Then we call the fit transform function from CV and to this function we pass in our tags column. This will transform all the words that we have in the tags column into a matrix of ones and zeros. And then we convert this to an array since cosine similarity expects an array format. We can print the vector object to preview the array. We see a lot of vectors separated by comma and lots of zeros. But don't worry, there are other numbers in there as well. We can also print an individual vector if we pass in an index. Also, if you want to see the corpus or all the words in the vector, then we can print them out using the get feature names function. These are the stem words from our tags column. To calculate the similarity between the movies, we will use cosine similarity. We simply supply the vector's object we generated above and save the results into a variable called similarity. This will compare all the movies to each other and calculate the distance for each. If you look at the first array from similarity, it gives us the distance of the first movie with all the other movies. First movie to itself is alike, so it has a score of 1. Then the score to the second movie 0.08, then all the way to the last movie. Cosine similarity measures the degree of the angle between two data points. We can check the second movie's distance as well. In this case, the second distance should be 1, since we are looking at the second array, and the second movie to itself should be identical. In the previous videos, we utilized the Euclidean distance in the KNN tutorial which measures the distance between the two data points with a straight line. Here we measure the angle and the lesser the angle degree, the closer the two movies are to each other. And the bigger the angle, the further apart the movies are. Let's define a recommend function to print top five related movies that we can recommend to a user. This function will take a movie's name and return five similar movies. First, we will need to check if this movie exists in our data set. We will look into the title column and call the str so we can use the contain function. And to the contain function, we will pass in the incoming movie's name. Then we grab the first index from the movie's list. 
Once we have the index, we can pass this into the similarity variable to get the similarity distances. Next challenge is to sort these distances so we can get top 5 similar movies with the least distance to the incoming movie. We can't simply call the sort function on the returned array. It will sort it in an ascending manner, so we will need to reverse the sort, but this will present the second problem, that with the reverse sort order, we will lose the index position. So we will call the enumerate function on the array, and this gives us a counter. So now if we iterate over it, we can see the counter for each distance. Let's go ahead and convert this into a list. Now we can see the each movie with the distance as a list along with the counter. Now we can apply the sort function on this list and set the reverse to true. It sorts our list, however, it is applying the sort on the first element in the list, which is the counter. And we need to specify that we want to sort this data on the second element, which is the distance. So we set the key to a lambda function and set the x to the second index, which is 1. Remember, the index starts from 0, so the counter index is 0. This should sort our distances correctly, and it does. Now we have all the pieces to define the function. I'll call the function recommend and it takes movie's name as an argument. We check if the movie exists in our data frame and if it does, then we grab the first index and pass this index to the similarity object, which calculates the distances between the movies. We sort the distance and grab the first five rows. First, let's print the title of the incoming movie. Then we iterate over the returned list and print the movie's title. And in case if the movie does not exist, we print a message back to the user so he knows that we don't have this movie in our database. This is it. Let's go ahead and test our recommendation system. I'll call the recommend function and pass it a movie's name. I'll go ahead and pass in the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. It returns five related movies to it. Our model works quite well, a movie recommendation system based on content-based filtering. We can go ahead and provide it another movie, in this case Matrix, and it'll print out the related movies to it. We can plug our model into a web application, and once the user selects or searches for a movie, it'll display the related movies as a recommendation. This is all for now. You can get the complete code on GitHub. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.